All right, gonna do a reasonably short video today. Uh, ran into a situation this past trapping season when I was trapping muskrat, where I had a heavy snow and a, a freeze over, and I hadn't intentionally set traps for mink, but I I had I had caught before mink incidentally in muskrat sets where the mink was gonna go into the muskrat den, obviously to eat the muskrat, so. I, had, I caught a really nice buck mink doing that. But in this situation, all my traps were frozen underwater. So the mink had no access to get into the water to get into the dens. And I could see the tracks of the mink all along the bank, up over the bank into another mar marsh area right next to the pond. And I thought, wow, that was, a, that, was that sucks. <laughs> I, in this area, you can wait a long time to catch one mink. Uh, they tend to have a, a, a quite a large area where they roam. So one mink, one adult mink might only cross uh, a spot where you have a trap once in three weeks or once in four weeks because they, they're covering that much of an area. Uh, we do have mink, of course. I, I see mink when I'm fishing as well. I've seen them from my boat. I've seen them on big lakes. I've seen them along streams. I've actually seen them. Uh, there's a little a creek that's not... 300 yards down the hill from my house where I've seen mink running along the bank in wintertime uh, You know jumping off the ice swimming in the water coming back up on the ice and working the opposite side of the bank The problem with ice is of course that especially in still water The pond freezes over really quickly and once that happens if you have sets under the water The mink has no access to those sets unless there's a hole in the pond somewhere where he can get in there and swim You know swim under a, a trap that's submerged so what I thought to do for, for next season, I made up some of these. And this is a mink box. Now, because I usually use 110 for rat trapping because I am trapping predominantly underwater. But on this, I'm actually using a 120. Uh, this is a Bridger 120 and hit the springs on this are a lot stronger than the springs that are on my 110s. These, these springs are hard for me to set by hand. I actually made a setter so I could compress these springs because uh, it's it's pretty rough on your hands trying to set it. Now they have safeties too, of course. Uh, you always, when you set them, you wanna set the safeties. Uh, I've caught my hand in 110s lots of times. If you catch your fingers in this, it's gonna hurt a lot. The, these springs, are they're really, really strong. And there's two, there's one on each side. So this is gonna ensure that if I do get a mink in the box, that uh, it's gonna kill him pretty quickly. Also, you, of course, you're gonna, I, where I am, you're gonna run incidences of incidentally catching coon in these boxes. Now, I can only set conibers, even in cubbies, I can only set conibers uh, within a waterway, a marsh, uh, ponds, streams, rivers, lakes. So anywhere that they consider where the water may travel, that's considered a waterway. Even if the water is two foot below that, where you have this trap, if the water is capable of reaching that point, it's still within the waterway. So on stream banks, uh, or anywhere around uh, swampy areas, marshes, uh, river banks, they, you know, these are legal to use. Now, there's other legalities. This trap is small. It's less than five inches square. So I don't have to have it recessed a certain depth. I can use concealed cubbies with like a 160, but there's minimum sizes in my state for the front of this box. It can't be over 50 inches square. If the box is 50 inches square, like if I'm using a 160, say for a raccoon or a fisher trap, uh, the, the trap has to be recessed seven inches from the opening of the, of the box. That doesn't apply to this. That's why there's, you have to check your state regulations for particular rules in your state. Uh, the rules in my state are that if, if I'm using a 160, which is seven inch spread, that's a 50 inch square inch entrance. The trap has to be recessed seven inches back into the box from the entrance of the box. So it makes it very difficult for somebody's golden retriever to stick his head in the box. Uh, the trap is recessed way back. So only a slender animal like a skunk, a raccoon, a fisher, something like that can actually, a mink can actually get into that box, you know, to reach the trap. 
Uh, but this is a 120. This is what I'm going to set today. And uh, like I said, I'm, I made the box. The bottom of the box here, you see it's not painted. This is actually picket fencing. It's pressure treated. The top of the box is the same. Unfortunately, I couldn't get pressure treated lumber the, the size I wanted in the, the sides of the box. Uh, this is an 8 by one It was at uh, 8 inches rough cut dimensions. It was 8 inches uh, by 1 by 8 feet long. And this was, like I said, it was picket fencing. You can actually see it raw here. It's green. It's pressure treated. This is 6 by one by half by eight. Now I have the raw pieces here ready to go. This is our end result. You can see on the back of the the, key, the box here, it's actually mesh. I don't know if you can see it there. There you might be able to see it. It's actually a mesh. So I want the mink to be able to see, as you can see, you can see my hand on the other side of it there if I hold it up. So he can see completely through that. Uh, Sometimes you'll get mink that are trap shy, so you you can change out the levers on the conner bear here, uh, the trigger. You can change it those out, and you can put a pan in there instead. What you would do is bend those triggers flat, and then you put a pan on it, so you'll actually walk across the top of it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can set it. I was originally going to make a box. I had seen a box that uh, a lot of you might know. This guy you see him on YouTube, Sam Wood Outdoors. Uh, he has lots of trapping videos. Good channel, actually. Uh, very passionate about trapping. He had a box that he made where there was a shelf on the front of the box and he had a conner bear keeper and he actually had the trap mounted out in front of the box, you know, out in front of it like that. Uh, I didn't want that. I wanted it recessed in the box. So if I got heavy snow or freezing rain or anything like that, that the trap would still be operational even if I had a freeze. Uh, so that was the intention of it and hopefully next season we'll see if it works. I'm going to put a few of them out and see if we can catch a mink. But I'll get on here and I'll show you what we did to make it up. Okay, first off I cut all my boards. They're 15 inches long. Of course they're all the same length. We're going to make, basically make a rectangle. Uh, for the boards that are going to be on the, the side, I, I cut notches down through the board on both sides for where my spring the springs are going to fit in it. That's going to what's going to support my trap. And I V cut the boards here. You can see with a chisel. I know my lightning here is pretty poor. The I V cut it so that the 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 ring of the spring can sit down inside the box pretty tight. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to drill it so it doesn't split, and then we're going to. Get our top and our bottom. We're gonna mount it square on each side. Like so. Like so. And then we're gonna screw it together. It's pretty easy. Let's get to drilling this. Get one all in to start it off. Waterproof deck and screw. Send it home. If you had a nail gun, you could use a nail gun for this too. There's one. I usually put three in on each side. Get it square. have to be perfect. The mink is not going to be concerned about how pretty the box looks. <laughs> He's only interested in what's inside. All right there you can see we have one side done. See the screws in there. 
And we'll do the top. And then we'll get the other side plate on. I always like to pre-drill the holes. Sometimes the boards will split a little bit because they're thin, but that's okay, you can always fill it. One more. Now you can see we basically have our box shaped ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the, the mesh to the back side of it. I have a big square of mesh here. Just wire mesh. So what I'll do is, I'm just gonna place it on my, on my box. This of course prevents the mink from stealing your bait without getting past the trap. And this we're gonna Staple this down really well. Because we don't want them. We don't want them getting a free meal. Make sure it's nice and flat. said you can uh, oh we gotta reload all right let me put some more staples on that but you can see now what we we're after meshing off the whole back of the box what I'll do now is I got my wire cutter and I'll trim this off I'll put some more staples in my gun we'll get out to the next part of it all right what I like to do too is that I'll tap the wire down into the wood after I've cut it because it can be quite sharp and you don't want to catch on stuff. And we finish loading our staples after a tactical reload. That's the bottom. in a knot that was pretty hard. Alright, there we go. There's our box basically finished. You see the mesh on the back there? You can see right through it. Now all we got to do is mount our trap to it. That too. Cut here. Smooth. I don't want any splinters on it. Stuff is going to get caught in. And there we have it. Now we're going to mount our trap up to it. We're going to do that next. Um, my other box there, I actually mounted it with fence post staples right to the top of the box. Again, I'd like to pre drill the holes. I'm also going to put, I, ha I have two, I usually use two tags. I'll put a tag on my trap, and I'll also have a tag on the box as well. In case the game warden wants to look at it, he doesn't have to mess with the, tr with the, the trap. I got these really nice uh, trapping tags. Let's see if I can get a close-up, although the light is very bad in here. Uh, it actually has my name and address and everything printed right on the, the stamped right into it. They're copper tags. I got them from uh, the snare shop. If you go to www.snareshop.com, uh, good place. I've been dealing with them for a long time. I believe they're in Iowa.
it's a good store. Uh, I was pretty quick with their shipping and I always got my stuff on time. So what we'll do is change out our drill bit. One hole there. Put our tag on. Like those quick change drivers. Hold our tag on there. I will paint over the tag. I have found if you leave shiny trap tags on your traps and Coon see them, Coon will mess with them. Coon will pull the tag, they'll lift it, pull the chain. You gotta hide that that shiny tag. Whatever it is, the shiny objects, they like messing with those, so. Uh, I'm going to put this one on my trap. What I'm going to do is where I'm going to anchor the trap. I'm going to anchor the trap to the top of the box. So you draw a hole from a fence staple so it doesn't, just so it doesn't split. Just to help it. So what we're going to do is, we're going to set our trap, one safety, make sure it fits, sometimes the boards are warped a little bit, you have to make sure that the, the trap is going to fit, keep your hand out of that trap. Keep your hand out of that trap. There's our second safety. respect these things these are on top of safety get your hand away from it all right there's our trap set and then we'll check our fit you always want to make sure the safety's outside that oh that's perfect back in as far as possible so now you see my you can it's easier to see it when the when it's the box is not black and dark so there's no room around that trap for something to try and squeeze by they have to go past that trigger now if i was using the i would probably ordinarily uh if i was setting i would try and put the trigger on the bottom so that the the, the lever is at, at the bottom side of it uh, obviously, if you're using a pan, I would put the pan on the bottom as well. But that's how it sits in there. You can see it's like I can shake it. It's perfectly stable. That trap won't come out. It's wedged in there nice and tight. So when Mr. Mink comes along and touches our spring here, he's done for. But always check too that to make sure that your trap works. You can see now that the trap is still mounted in the box, and that's as far as he got. And it, Still didn't come out, so. And those straps are tight, they are tight. See how I had to fight just to get the hammer out of it? It's like tight, tight. I might have to actually have to open it to get it to come out. Ugh. So. As you can see, it works really well. And that's a perfect fit.
perfect fit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our trap tag on our trap. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put our staple on the top of the box here. Put another staple in on the opposite side. Uh, the the thing with these traps is that that they I still like I said have the potential that a coon is going to stick his head in that trap. Don't ask me why they did they will, but if that's the case, I want to anchor the box and the trap to something solid because that that this trap might not kill a coon immediately. It will kill him eventually, but he might you know. They can, they're very strong, they're very powerful. He might trash around, try to get away. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this trap anchored, wired to something solid. Uh, I can also run a stake. Actually, the video I done the other week, I made these stakes for muskrat trapping where I had the conibear keeper on it. Uh, I found another good, uh, good use for these is if you're using a box like this, you can actually put the stake in alongside the box and drive the stake, hammer the stake down from the top, flip it upside down, and then actually run it into the ground like that so it's it's holding the box down and pinned down. Now, by my state law, this box doesn't have to be anchored. Uh, if I make a fisher box, uh, which has the trap recessed in back seven inches uh, for bigger traps than this, it has to be anchored so that it can't roll around or can't be moved around. So you would use a stake like this to anchor it to the ground or drill a hole in the bottom of it and then drive a stake down in each side of it so something can't roll the box around. Uh, that's by law. So I, you have to make sure that the box is anchored. Uh, this, this would work pretty good for that too though. You could put one right at the back of it and that would anchor that pretty solidly down into the ground because then nothing can lift it. Nothing can tip it over, turn it over. Uh, like I found with my weasel boxes, you've seen on my other videos, if you watch some of my trapping videos from this last season, that if I leave weasel boxes out, coons find them too, and they'll mess with them, and they'll drag them around. So it's always better to anchor them down. But that's uh, basically the, the gist of our mink box there. Uh, I painted mine. I'm probably going to paint them multiple different camouflage colors. The other one I showed you there was just a, ba a base coat of flat black. Uh... You could, I mean, you can hide them with natural vegetation as well. You could put netting on it and then put vegetation in the netting as well. Uh, you could wrap it with burlap or like sometimes you can buy those real cheap blind burlap covers. You could cut sections of that up and camouflage it with that so uh, it can't be seen. Uh, but you can hide it along the bank, you, you know, put grass over it, put sod over it, put moss over it, whatever it, it's going to take to cover it. Uh, more so from people. I think it... You, it, you could also leave it leave it out with the trap out of it and pre-bait it you know before opening day and maybe get a mink used to coming to it like they would do for fisher you, know, you can get a mink used to visiting it for food uh, and then of course when open day comes you you load it up <laughs> now like I said I'm gonna give them a try and see how they work but it's not that difficult to make uh, I don't have too much money invested in the in the lumber for it. Probably I made three boxes. Probably they may have cost me ten dollars a piece, if, if even that. So it's not too much of an investment, but hopefully they work and we'll give them a try. Never tried a mink box before, so there was a couple of other things I wanted to try uh, in the upcoming season. Uh, maybe I, I wanted to try a float for mink and muskrat. I have to do some research on the legalities. It's not legal in my state to have a trap set where there's bait visible from the air. So a lot of times on the floats that they, they put bait like a carrot or something like that on the on the float. So I'd have to check into the legalities of that. 
Uh, if so, I could build a box like this in the middle of the float and just have have the bait in the box and then have the trap at each end, you know, one on each side. So that I might have to do that. Uh, I'm, I want to build fisher boxes as well. I want, I'm going to try that. I just recently got my certification for uh, cable restraint. Uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, you have to have uh, a special license beside your regular fur takers license. You have to have a special license just to set cables. Now, I can only use cables uh, in the late season for trapping. Uh, so that would be, this, it usually opens December 26th, the day after Christmas, uh, up until the close of, of trapping. Uh, it's in primarily, of course, intended for fox and coyote. So when, I mean, right now, there, I have three feet of snow on the ground in some places. Some places more with the drift. Uh, I have four, four and a half feet of snow in some spots. So my trapping has been shut down for two weeks, pretty much. Uh, any sets that I had in the ground are buried. They're, they, they're in not even not even visible. They're, they're like buried in feet of snow. Uh, even now a cable restraint will be difficult to use because the snow changes level, it melts away. So I set a cable restraint out in snow and the snow is eight inches under that trap in a, in a day's time, it's 10, 12 inches under the trap and now the animals are working underneath the snare. So, it's it's pretty tough it makes it pretty tough but that's something i want to get more involved with next year as well uh is the cable restraints i actually got a i had ordered some cables and i ordered some uh snare uh like cable restraint supports so this is one that i got from the snare shop again i thought this was a really good idea i'd seen an old video from uh, Tom Miranda, where he used railroad ties to, for cable restraint supports. Although he was he was snaring in the Dakotas, so he was using an actual snare. Uh, in this state, I'm not allowed to use a snare. It's a it's a relaxing lock, so it's a restraint. I can't have it round entanglement or anything like that. So it has to be set in an open trail. Uh, I can't have any brush or wood or anything or a fence row where the animal is able to get entangled in. Uh, that's would be against the law. So. I had to set them in open trails, but I really like this uh, this support they made. This is nine gauge wire, and at the end of it, if you can see it, it's like a six inch nail, woodworking nail, and then they welded the wire to the nail, and then they have a little hook, an eyelet in it here, so it stops the support spinning. So if, I'm only going to be able to use this when the ground is frozen, so I have to hammer the wire into the ground. So that and the nail enables me to do that. So it, the nail goes down into the ground, then the little hook stops it from spinning. If something bushes or brushes against it, or deer brushes against it, or something, it stops the the support from spinning around. But I thought that was really really good idea. That's that's really nice. And uh, this will go right into the little spring lock on the snare to hold the the snare up properly. The cable restraint. But yeah, I thought that was really good. That was a good good idea. You fold up and sit in your bag. I also want to give uh, a quick shout out to a, a, a channel I shouted out a little while ago in my one of my trapping videos. And actually, I think it was in the first trapping video I done for this season. Uh, guy from western side of Pennsylvania up by uh, Pittsburgh, Jakey Crack Outdoors. Uh, he recently done a giveaway, a thousand subscriber giveaway on his channel, and I actually won. <laughs> I won that giveaway. Uh, it was a, a, a joint effort between him and a gentleman by the name of Matt Brophy, who owns uh, Appler's Fur in Pennsylvania now. A, a gentleman had owned it before and operated that store for years. It's a very old time uh trapping and fur handling store he's a, also a fur buyer so i actually won a gift certificate for his store so in the very near future i'll be getting some more trapping supplies from him and i'll, I'll show you at that point what i get but i'd like to thank matt and jakey crack outdoors so check out his channel uh really appreciated appreciated that giveaway that was really good so all i gotta do now is paint my mink box here and uh, we should be in action so Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you all.